Hello everybody, well welcome to this chapter of On The Lounge. Today we're looking and we're speaking to Victoria Rose, who's just over this side of me, just here, there, and on that way, this way, she's over there. Um, she's like an unbelievable human being, she's got so many fantastic stories. Um, if you're if you're in the page right now, I'd really like you to do one thing for me, and that would be to hit that like and subscribe and all notifications. If you're on Rumble, smash that um, thumbs up thing on Rumble. All of these things that you do just help me. If at the end of the session you don't like it, just just, just unlike it. You know, it'd be a really good thing to just, oh, I'm watching another on the lounge. I'll just like that straight away. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe right now. I'll give you a second. Okay, go now. All right, so uh, no further ado to this. We're going to go right into Victoria Rose. She's over the site over here. Um, Victoria, please, the, the, what we're doing with this interview process on the lounge with me is the idea of it is that you are going to tell the viewers one thing about your past that you, uh, it's either a value or a principle or an ideal or a moral that you're still using and doing today. <clears throat> past, I like it to be like distant past, not um, you know, 10 years ago past. And then you just, you can spend as much time on that as you like. The next part of it, like the, the second stage, will be something in the recent past, like the last four years, that uh, has affected you and it's it's keeping you going strongly or whatever at this stage now in the, in the present. And the last part of it's going to be one thing that is currently happening in the world today that really annoys you. Now, I'm allowed to say pisses you off, but I don't think I should because you're a lady. And you don't ever swear. So I won't say pisses you off. I'll just say whatever annoys you. So, Victoria, are you ready to start with this? Ah, sure am. Okay. So one thing also I forgot to mention, um, if it's okay with you to mention the year you were born in your introduction, that would be really cool. Um, no no birth date, of course, because you don't want to receive thousands of red roses on that day, um, or unless you do. Please, no, just year's fine. Um and I've just got to say that you are um, what we call in the generational times a part of the silent generation. Is that correct? No, they're the older ones. I'm so what are you? A baby boomer. I'm the oh, older the baby, baby boomer. boomer. Since I'm a baby boomer, that makes us the same. So you're, you're right, so younger boomer. baby okay, boomer cool. than me. <laughs> I just, I'm at the end of it. Yeah, you're at the beginning. No, so you're the younger it? one. I'm the, I'm at the younger the end. one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm leaving it up to you now. You you drive it. How do you want it? What do you want to do? Thank you, David. So you called me my name, yep. and uh, I've been called many names in my very long life. And the the name that I'm most proud of is the name of mother. As a solo parent, mm. I've raised two children to adulthood, and the absolute bonus is they still talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And, yeah, and another name, soldier. I've served Australia for 23 years as a soldier in the A-Res, training over 7,000 officers and soldiers and weapons drill and theory, rising to the rank of warrant officer. So just, sorry, just sorry to interrupt you. You trained them on weapons? Drill what? and theory. Oh, wow, that's cool. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, oh, there you go. I did that for 23 years, uh, mainly with 5th Training Group, which is Lewin Barracks in East Fremantle, Western Australia. Uh, other names, author, leadership trainer, solo traveller, house sitter, and more recently, chatbot and taskbot creator. Wow. Now, David, I'm going to answer your first question. Uh-huh. Uh, are you ready for it? Yeah, I'm sitting down. Okay. I was born in a pub. More specifically, the Freemasons Hotel in Albany, Western Australia. Oh, Way hang on. Then, was, that, was that a hotel separate to the actual Freemasons building? Because I used to teach my martial arts out of the Freemasons Hall in Albany. Well, I was a baby then, David, so I don't know. And were you a baby I when you were born? Pardon? Were you a baby when you were born? I know. 
true. So I had no clue. Uh, <laughs> all I know is what my mother told me and that it's a hotel. And I was recently in Albany, first time in a very, in decades really, and I went to check out the Freemasons Hotel. Unfortunately, it's been knocked down, a beautiful, beautiful old heritage building. It was to make way for a reject store type supermarket uh, and those people went bust and it's now a car park so it was tragic i know can i ask you a question on that just as before i just i don't lose track of my train of thought with that freemason pub as you're heading down york street in albany um there was the the old um albany hotel i think or the premier on the left hand side heading down to the to the harbour. And if you turned left there and went up the hill a little bit, that's where the Freemason Hall was. Is that where the pub was? Um, that's I'm not really quite sure the location of York Street, but I can just say that wherever whatever street we were in, we turned left and did go up the hill a little bit, and there's a car park. And on the right-hand side? On the left-hand side. Oh, right. Okay, different place. That's on okay. It's roughly place. where I was thinking it might have been. But anyway, sorry, yeah. you continue. Okay. So to continue my journey to answer your question, uh, my 17-year-old mother was banished to the country to birth her illegitimate daughter. Talking about names, David, I had been mm. called bastard a couple of times in my life. <laughs> and uh, at that time, I didn't know that I actually was one. That you were one. <laughs> I don't use that word anymore, though, Victoria. Oh, it's still a valid word, though. Oh, still a absolutely valid a valid word, word but they just yeah. don't you seem to use it anymore. Yeah. Oh, there are lots of other words that mean the same <laughs> thing, talking about names. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, on an August day in 1950, my year of birth, my mother fell down some stairs. She must have been working there as a cleaner or something because she was far too young to be working as bar staff. And she was feeling some pain and she went to her room to rest. And that's when I burst into the world as a solo performance. Oh, what does wonderful. that mean? There were no doctors, there were no midwives, there were no nurses, just my mother and me. So, <laughs> do you know, it's wow. interesting too, I didn't get to realise that my uh, father was not my biological father until I was about 38. And then I got to see my real birth certificate. And in that, uh, the proprietor of the hotel was named as a witness. Just what on earth is going on there? Okay. So at birth, my life as a solo traveller was set in motion, David, and it became the way oh, to this the very You're doing that. day. Okay, so is that is that the one thing you would say from that early, early, early beginning as solo, like right at the very solo. beginning, that yeah. you still maintain most of your life? Yes. It's a value you've held, held through most of that? As far as the travelling, but in many other ways as well. So is it, you, were, you, were, you said in the little bit of the intro that you did, you were with the Army Reserves for 23 years and yeah. did the training in the, in the um, um, what was it, the, the military guns, weapons? Weapons, drill and theory. Yep, wep, weapons, drill and theory, and then you did training in the corporate world and, I think you might have mentioned real estate or you have to me in, in the past. And a lot of those things, that, were you, did you generally take the role of a trainer? Is that what you generally fell into as part of your psyche and your personality? Uh, in many ways, as a real estate agent, then you are solo. That's one of the really yeah. good things about it because you operate under the umbrella of the main um, business as such. So in Fremantle, the company that I worked the longest with was Chesterton International, and that was great fun. Mm. I haven't heard of them. Yeah, yeah. Must be, is that just just Victorian branch, a Victorian? No, that oh, was in Western Inter Australia. Yeah, if and the they name are... says international, then it can't just be Victoria or Western Australia, can it? It's got to be international. Yeah. I was having I was having a blonde moment. 
Oh, I mean, sorry, Reddit. Oh, I mean, I was having a moment. <laughs> you need to be very careful, David. Oh, yes, because I'd hate to offend the blondes and the redheads and the brunettes and the dark haired people. Right. And, you know, I'd hate to do that. And I don't mean to offend them because, you know, they're not all silly. <laughs> Anywho. So, so that you. was. <laughs> So that was a long time ago. So that was given you know, right. a few years ago, and it's moved you through up to. Um, I like. I just. I know it's it's yours, and I, you can tell it where you want to go with it. But um, you started solo backpacking around the world, and for me, that's that's so exciting. I mean, I, I personally can't imagine doing that because, and I'm I'm relatively solo. I quite enjoy my own company, and you know, if I had to be solo, I would be. No, I wouldn't be. If, you know what I mean? I would be okay with it. But solo traveling around the world is a huge thing to do at any age. When, when did you start that? Well, what I'd like to do, David, is include that in my answer oh. to question two, if that's okay. Okay, cool. Sorry, okay. I jumped ahead of myself. I'm good like that. You did. You're a bad boy. I know. In late 2017, a series of life events plunged me into deep discontent with my life's journey. <laughs> Crikey, I said to self. <laughs> You wrote an Amazon bestseller on how to make the rest of your life the best of your life. Yet here you are wallowing in victimhood. Best hang on, hang on. Life. Hang on. Did you say you wrote an Amazon bestseller? I did. I didn't know that. I love this. Seriously, these are good. You're telling me so many things I didn't so know. Much I, don't, I don't know why. I'm just going to have to. Sorry about this. I have no clue why I'm getting all of these no notifications. I never normally get them. I do apologize. Okay. I should have turned the phone off. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. So Amazon bestseller, that was about uh, future travel and experiences and things like that. What was that no, about? no. How to make the rest of your life the best of your life. And yeah. the tagline to that was tough love for smart single women over 60. Because, and nice. the reason why I wrote that book was in my, I, I had my own leadership training business i ran that for about a decade and i traveled all around australia and new zealand training uh, i think that was uh, over fifteen thousand business participants and men and women uh, mixed groups and what i noticed was how the mature women in the groups were responding and they'd come up to me and chat about their lives after the training, the workshop. Yeah. And I thought, wow. So that led me not only to write the book, but also to start some private seminars as well, some private workshops. And I really enjoyed that. So like over 60, still fabulous. Mm. <laughs> and of course, the, most common, the, the common, so most common complaint was, but what if I've never felt fabulous, let alone <laughs> feel fabulous? <laughs> of course you can. Over, 50, over 60, you can start feeling fabulous if you never you, did before. You are so right. And yeah. that was my intention after getting the insight to speaking to hundreds of women in Australia and New Zealand around what their corporate and business life was like and how unhappy, bitter, uh, and just discontented they were with the whole scenario in the workplace. So after uh, saying to myself, crikey, I wrote the book. Okay, to be fair, it was an Amazon bestseller for about three microseconds because that, yes. that's about all you get. But my advice to myself was to best go back and read my own book, which I did. And doing that... I changed my mind, my mind set. So rather than be in a really dark place where um, discontented, dark days, who am I, am I worthy? I just changed my mind. And in August 2018, I boarded a plane to Europe with the mission to prove it was possible to travel and live overseas on an Australian aged pension. So, so that, sorry, yeah. so 2018, that would have made you, sorry, I know you were doing my maths, 50, that would have made you 68. It's just after wow, my 68th birthday. Yeah. 
the yeah. whole way. That's huge, Victoria. That's, I mean, that, as I said earlier, this like for, me, for any, even someone at twenty eight to do that's monumental. That's fantastic. But do, do you think your all your previous life skills set that in motion and made that a, a, easy for you to do, or you, is that Absolutely. just your personality? Uh, well, remember my answer to your first question. It was the way to be a solo mm. traveller as an eighteen mm. year old. I solo travelled on a ship because ships were a lot cheaper in those days uh, to the UK for a traditional two-year working holiday in the UK. And that's not such a big deal because that was quite common for young Australians to do in those days. Yeah. 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 So, so that did. So you really started your solo journey in, um, at 18, really, didn't you? When no, you did that first travel. Yeah, a that's birth. exciting. <laughs> a birth, yeah. No, you were with your mother then. Oh, all right. I and was then... born solo. If that was the other... No, no. So, so all the youth, the journey, jumping in and helping with your mother as a young child, well and truly helped the solo journey. But you travelled at eighteen. That's even in 1968. That's still, that's still a pretty brave thing to do. And it was a very I... volatile time in the world with all of the, you know, the rebellions and the and the changing of. I don't know what you call it. Not so much rebellions, but there was um, I mean, even it's almost anarchy with the, the cultural revolution and you know, all of the all the things that were happening in that decade of the '60s and even the beginning to the '70s. It was I reckon it was a brave time to start travelling. That was huge of you to do that. At that precise time that I was boarding the ship, the P and O Orchides. Um, I was supposed to be going through the Suez Canal talking about warfare and stuff happening mm. in the world and they closed the Suez Canal because of the wars and stuff that were going on there. And when wow. I got to the UK, I was supposed to be going to Northern Ireland. But guess what oh. was happening in Northern Ireland? Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, like terrorist bombs yeah. everywhere. That's huge. So now, yeah. when you left, did you know any of that was happening? See, this is the big difference. You don't know about those things, not like now. Uh, wolves yeah. brought into our lounge rooms, into our bedrooms now. We yeah. see all the strife Everywhere. and torment. We see everything. Yeah. If we yeah. choose to tune to that channel. Yes, very true. Yeah, it's, again, that, that takes responsibility in, in you making mm. the choice to tune into that. Yeah. So to continue my answer to question two, after yep. solo backpacking, this is to get back to what you were saying earlier, after solo backpacking through 10 countries for 16 months, my mission was accomplished. Wow. And, yeah, and th the only way I could actually do that was to continue with house sitting and to volunteer. In all my 16 months away, I actually only paid for three nights accommodation. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, oh, sorry. yeah. You did house sitting when you were traveling around solo and around Europe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. My first Are house sit was in Turkey. So I missed that. I was interrupting house. you. My first overseas house sit was in Turkey. Oh, wow. Yeah. And how long were you there for? I was in, well, I, uh, you can only get a visa for three months and oh. I left with one day left to go on my visa. So I was in oh. Turkey for nearly three months and did wow. a couple of house sitting and volunteering gigs and was really surprised by how wonderful Turkey was. I really enjoyed it. Nice. Would you go back? Uh, I would Except for this, there are still so many places I haven't visited. For instance, oh, yeah. there are the northern countries. I haven't been up there to Norway or Sweden or Finland. Or Ice, perhaps not Iceland, but <laughs> I haven't yeah. been you know, to me places. Off. Yeah, yeah. But then what happened after arriving back in Australia mid-December 2019, just months before the lockdowns, the restrictions yeah. and mandates that changed yeah. how we lived life, I was locked out of my preferred state, which was Victoria, and locked yeah. into just one suburb for seven months, just me and one little Jack Chi. 
solo again. It's the yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. That's a long oh. time to be in those lockdowns and, and only having a, a little dog for company, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. How did that affect you, do you think? Oh, again, um, there were extra conditions that impacted and it certainly wasn't pleasant, but uh, I'm a solo traveller, so I was sure. able to... I have many interests and I love the internet and I love my Mac, my mm. MacBook Pro. Uh, yeah, and you can't help that, but I guess that's fine. I you know. might you, you might get over that in time. I know. And I was born with a science fiction book in my hand, so I, <laughs> I'm on to all of the things uh, about with nice. technology. It's really mm. good. Yeah. Can I, can I ask you a rel what I would think a relatively personal question? Well, you can ask it. I may not answer it. Personally. Absolutely. You don't have to. Uh, I'm just I'm just remembering just as you're talking and since that 2019 and, and the lockdowns and those sorts of things that you were, after that time, you were involved in the quite scary floods in Lismore. Ah, um, yes. Yeah. Is that, is, some, is that something you could be prepared to share with the, the watchers? Sure, sure. So uh, one of the questions I find out before I accept any house-sitting gigs now is if they're prone to flooding because oh, unless you've near water. ever <laughs> been in a flood, you have no idea what it's like. So no. I looked after, I was caring for two beautiful um, a bull mastiff cross and another Australian shepherd, beautiful big black dogs. And the owner had gone to the Netherlands to be with her family for Christmas. Then we got word that um, there was going to be a flood, but the owners assured me that it had never gone above the floor of their uh, Queenslander before. The floor of their Queenslander is 12 metres above ground. Um, all I can say metres. is 12 metres above ground. Ground or sea or water level? Ground. Gee, that's a long way. It's almost like two stories or three stories. It's Queenslander, yeah. yeah right. It's big. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. it is tall because uh, the hole underneath of the Queenslander was uh, a whole different rental accommodation for oh, someone wow. else yep. who got totally flooded. Wow. And at 6 a.m. that morning, the two dogs and I were sitting on the sofa watching as the water bubbled up through the floorboards. No. That was wow. scary. <laughs> I'm going to say, like, that's scary, but that's a little bit more than scary. It's like, at any point, did you think, oh, it's going to stop now? Or do you think, is this going to keep going? Like, what was, what sort of things were going through your head? I was just thinking, I've got two dogs here, and mm. it doesn't look like it's going to stop. Uh, it just kept rising and rising. And on one occasion, I phoned the police control centre, and the guy who answered was asking me questions and one and when he asked me how old I was I said I'm 72 and he said you sound sprightly for a 72 year old and I said I am sprightly especially when death is imminent <laughs> <laughs> but luckily the SES turned up with with their barge and and uh, a lot of people did not leave that street because They'd never had, a, and they were nearly all the houses on that street were Queenslanders, and the water yeah. had never risen that high before. Are you playing it down a little bit, Victoria? No, it well, was it's scary. a very terrifying thing to go through. At any point, did you think about leaving and not taking the dogs? Oh God, no. As a matter of fact, I would fear for my emotional state if the dogs hadn't been saved. I'm very yeah. grateful. I'm very grateful that I had put that harness on because, yeah, I was never afraid for myself. I intuitively knew that I was going to be all right, but the, the fear did start to come in that I would not be able to save the dogs. But it all turned out well. Yeah. Um, and, of course, um, there are after effects, of course. Um, so how, do you think those are still affecting you? Oh, not as much. Just every no, no. now and again, I might have a feeling. But as I said, if those dogs had been swept yeah. 
lay in the flood, then that would have been hard to to take. Yeah, I think I think the what you were saying about that is, and when I say you're you're underplaying it, I think you know, I would say there's a lot of people in that position who probably would have left the dogs. So, for my mind, what you did, and I I'm, I'm, I would say I'm almost similar to you. I wouldn't have gone, but I think mm. a lot of people don't put as much value into those as you've done, and I think that's actually you know, fantastic and uh, you know, makes you the Victoria that we all know and, and love. You know? So, all credit to you for doing that. But for me, I think I would find myself a little traumatised, um, just knowing how high the water came and, mm. and knowing that it, how high it could have gone and knowing that mm. it could have receded, but you were rescued and the dogs are saved. That's truly a fantastic story, and I think you know, that's, that's a that, so that was only a year, two years ago now almost. Yeah, that was February 2021. Wow. No, no it was two years 2022. ago. 2022. 2022. Wow, last year. Damn, yeah. Far out, Victoria. That, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess that that's something that might be impacting a you, little bit you on the now of, um, of mm. the life. So I think maybe one and two of those questions or opportunities have been answered. Unless there's something else that you think in the last – few years it's impacting you that is something that you're going to is still in part of your life is there something else you'd like to share that would be I, cool too. no i'm i'm quite happy with that and it's enough information to share i think yeah. uh, and it all yeah. ties in it's from the original solo traveler yes. it's, it's yeah. the same so and we yeah. all are solo travelers we came in solo we leave solo we don't take anyone with us well not no. actually with us so no no well so it is our journey and and so long as we yeah. know it's our journey and we don't want to take other people can share our journeys with us absolutely for sure and you invite yes. people in some people jump on your back and you don't necessarily want them but it's still ultimately your journey and yours is up to now and like i say for the next 10 or 20 years going to be really really cool as well because you're going to keep doing your, your, your back not backpacking, your house sit for, for quite a while? Is that, is oh, that... It depends. Uh, life is ever changing. I'll, I'll see. <laughs> I'm currently, I'm here in Newcastle looking after Finn and uh, he's That's the... Finn in the background, yep. Yes, yeah, Finn. And uh, I've discovered Merriweather Beach and I really love it. It's got lots of lovely things around it. it and it doesn't flood. <laughs> yeah. Does it have a coffee shop? Does it have a what? A coffee shop. It's got a couple of really great coffee shops. And nice. and you're just there having your, your magic coffee, looking out over the ocean, and the whales are going by now. So that's yeah. amazing. So, so just on that, you said your magic coffee. So I know, I now know from you, you're so the magic coffee is simply a res double ristretto shot in a small cup, low tide. In other words, three quarters full of milk. Is that a strong coffee? Heck yes. And <laughs> it's smooth. And uh, if the beans are good, which most of the times they are, it's just yeah. an incredible experience to start your day. Well, right, well, that's really cool to get from where you've been up to where you are right now. So mm. something in there right now, just to, to go through the last section, the third part of this is, all right, what's happening in the world today that really annoys you? Okay. How long have you got, David? Oh, I, stream can go for as long as you'd like to talk. So I know Joe Rogan does three-hour podcasts. Um, <laughs> well, we're one. not going that long. I can't leave no, no, no. in no, no. marking pick that one. long. Only <laughs> just pick one. It's really easy four, to the one that you would and say rave. At this second, be the worst. It's really easy to rant and rave about what's happening today. The injustice, the cruelty, the greed, the stupidity, the compliance, the victimhood, the corruption, the desperate yeah. need for approval, and the list is long. <laughs> well, although that one's a good one, one, the desperate need for approval. Although one annoying thing may rise above the other others for today, all the other things clamour for attention the next day and the day after. The result, I'm a mess too. 
So that's taking note of those annoying things because yeah. one cannot rise above the other for long. The others no. all swamp you in. So yeah. the solution, for starters, not getting offended at everything. That kind of helps. I, I think never, that's really important. It's very important. Yeah. I, I never watch mainstream agenda-driven news. I choose the media and people I watch. I do my own research and take responsibility for the decisions I make. I look for where I can make a difference. Where I can make a difference only starts with me, how I react to situations, recognising my responsibility to remedy a situation which I've helped to create. And making my bed first thing in the morning helps. <laughs> I think that is absolute gold. You know, as as I've, I've heard it from a few places and a few people about just the simple act of making the bed. And I think the one thing that was really means a lot to me in that is that if I think it was a, a US admiral who said it to a, a mm. class that was graduating that even if you have a really bad day and nothing's gone right for you when you come home you look at your bedroom and go I, I did something i achieved something even if it was as simple as making a bed and mm -hmm. i used to say to my students that making a bed is if you want to stop your parents giving you a hard time and how dirty your room is make your bed because the parents will walk in and see a messy bed and then they'll look for everything else if your bed is clean the parents look at look in and smile and go wow the bed's made and they walk away so I actually don't see the mess on the floor if the bed is made. So it's like a double bonus for you, isn't mm. it? Make mm. the bed feel good, make the bed and other people feel that you've done something and accomplished something. So I think that's a really cool attitude, make your bed um, and I all the other bits that go with it. Take responsibility, yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Just read you that there's a lot of blaming on others, you know. So it starts with you. And when I was a leadership trainer in my business, I, I all of my training was, my, must, might I say, cleverly crafted to really pinpoint the fact this actually is important learning about them and how they respond to what's happening. It's not just about the workplace. It's about the home place as well because that's who they actually are, their responses. Yeah. And yeah. I, I used to have a lot of fun with that. So that's my answer to your question. You need yeah. to look at yourself. What is the yeah. part that you're playing? And get your energy up. Get your energy flowing and yeah. notice the difference. Yeah. So directly underneath your, your um, face on this presentation over here, there, it says hashtag Treos. Um, yes. And that's... That's um, the T R A O Y S is take responsibility and own your shit. Wow. And so if, if, that, if that hashtag Traos down the bottom there is ultimately, um, even in, again, same because I'm not the same as you, but I've done training in different areas, not quite as yes. exciting as yours, but it's all about that mindset, isn't it? That yes. the only way we can fully grow as an individual is to look at everything that you do mm. as an individual and take responsibility for everything you possibly can mm. without without blaming someone else for I'm this way because this or I'm that way because this person did this to me or that to me it's like it doesn't matter what they do if I go well I can choose to own this or I can choose not to and that's taking responsibility does that sort of go with what you're saying do you think it's totally. partly true yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's totally true uh, it all starts with you. So uh, I've read many times uh, that we create our own reality. And I have thought that meant it's how you react to what happens. But I also realise it goes deeper. So why do you react like you do to what happens? It's because you have a belief around how, what that situation means and how you should react. And yeah. so it's you. It's looking at what is it that you believe 
uh, around about life and do those beliefs serve you? Because so many people have beliefs they got in as little children and here they are now, an adult, and they're behaving many times as a child, a spoiled brat. And that's because <laughs> they're operating on a, a standard or uh, an ideal or an idea that they took on board as a, as a child and they haven't examined it since. It's very exciting. You know, I, was, I talked about on my Saturday morning lives, um, bacon and bourbon, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, just a little plug right there. Um, I talked about memory a couple of weeks ago and the fact that the memory over a period of time has been tested, but it's only only about 50, 57% accurate, even over a short period of time from actually what happened in the event of the time to what you perceive the memory of there is, of is if that made any sense. Um, so if you have a, what you were just saying then, if you have a, a, an experience as a young person and you don't, ever re-look at that and investigate how that can change and your memory of that experience could be completely wrong it may not have ever been anything like that so why do we try and hold on to that memory and why can't we just look at it as an adult and go well that's the way it was i don't react choose to react that way now i guess that's again like taking some responsibility for that and that's that's when you grow up you know, if i think if you act like a child and anything happens as you said before a spoiled brat and you're never really going to be a grown-up person, are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very <interesting>. true. <laughs> I guess, I guess, yeah. Moving, moving through so many aspects of what you said about not looking at mainstream and searching your own information, finding out the truth that works. You try and look as, at both sides of one issue if you possibly can, and determining the value that suits you. Is if nothing else over the last three or four years we've seen so much so many lies and so many things that are trying you can almost see the manipulation happening and mm. and the fact that so many people just don't care and, and the people who do care are the ones that do what you do you know mm. and don't listen to mainstream media that so has an agenda it's unbelievable and open themselves up to looking at all these different other avenues so you said something earlier about your current position doing um chatbots and similar things Task how do you bot. feel about the big scare in the world at the moment of um, ai well it's it's happening i've uh, as i have said i was born for the science fiction book in my hand there is yeah. not one thing happening in the world that we even know about let alone the stuff we don't know about today that i haven't read about in a book somewhere at some yep. stage yeah so, robotic stuff yeah yeah Isaac it's Asimov. And I think it will be an interesting um, uh, how it unfolds. Can we stop it? I don't think so. So, no. uh, and it's no use being scared by it because that just puts you in a state of fear. And we've all seen what being put in a state of fear has done to so many over, let's just talk about the last three years, let alone the history yeah. of humans. And, oh, it's and unbelievable. How, yeah, so... It's uh, how they control us, isn't it, Victoria? Like, if you yeah. go right back, as, you, know, you can go back to the, the Greeks and they always bring in the gods of all the multiple gods of the Greeks to, if you don't do this, they'll smite you his, this way or that way. And even all the way through the last 2,000 years, it's all been the same fear-based thing. And when we lose sight of those 2,000-year traditions, we've now got to fear something else. And... And now it's AI. Is 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 it something we should embrace? Because I mean, I'm to say this with utter respect for you. Uh, at 72, nearly 73, or 73 already, um, aren't you the sort of person that would go, no, AI is bad and freak me out and have nothing to do with it? But I don't feel that from you. I don't think it's a no, little bit different. It can help. So I've been a small business owner now for since ooh, I jumped the corporate ship in oh yes 2008 august 2008 started wow. my own business right in the so-called global financial crisis time yeah, has never you. been a, a, a fab fabulous thing with me uh, and um it's because of my intense curiosity 
about supporting my, myself first and seeing how difficult it is as a small business owner to get any traction, no matter how good your offering is, this is what caused me to actually uh, look more at technology and to understand it. Now, I'm not saying it's easy at all. Mm. Currently, mm. with building my task spots, it's, uh, that isn't easy either. <laughs> <laughs> but I refuse. I refuse to give up because it yeah. is uh, an absolute time saver and a boon to small, medium, even large business owners. Can you explain, what a, so can you explain what a task spot is? Yeah. Well, it probably takes a little bit more than me just uh, chatting now. But let's okay, can you give an example of a task spot site, a site that has okay. one? I'll just, I'll do it this way. So what a task yep. spot does is it does the actions that you would do in your business repetitively every day or a couple of oh. times a week, whatever the action is that you have to do to grow your business, to get leads, to nurture and all that. But you don't get to... Uh, do what made you want to actually start your business, which was to deliver your gifts, your skills, your, your talents. So here's the example. For two years on Facebook, I have 3.6K friends. And for two years, I've been manually acknowledging their birthdays. That took a lot of time. And there are issues yeah. with that, David. I would have to copy and paste the message. Sometimes I forget to change the name. It was yep. the same message to person, to person, to person. Yep. So what I, yep. what I have now uh, as a subscription model, I have built what I call birthday bot. Every day oh. at my scheduled time, birthday bot goes in and she gives a greeting to all of my friends whose birthday is on that day. Never get to the oh, name cool. wrong, yeah? And it's never the same message because we use this, this um, format called spin tax, which means I can create 20 varieties of a birthday message and birthday bot just cycles through them. So, wow. yeah, it's, uh, it's fabulous. I love it. It's uh, because we've got to nurture David, it's no use getting the leads and then forgetting them. You've no, got to look after people. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's a fantastic thing. I didn't didn't yeah. realise that's what you do. That's I know you did bots and you've done the um ask a question and it promote prompt you for answers and then you give them the answer that's to give you other questions. Yeah. Chatbot. Okay. Chat yeah. Yeah, that's actually interesting. So have you seen and had a look at chat GPT? Oh yes. Yeah. I have. And your views on that? Oh, it's amazing. Yes, you have to is, learn you have to learn how to prompt properly. So yep. if you're not prompting properly, so it's always the same. Garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> it's like when you search on Google or yep. any browser, yep. Um, yep. you don't put in the right prompt to the right search term you won't get back what the information that you want so That's you have to true. learn yeah yeah but it's very brilliant true. i'm resisting it at the moment only because there is so much else that i'm focusing on are yeah. you using it david well I, I, look i did look at it um <laughs> mainly mainly to ask it a question about AI, <laughs> it's like, because I did a section as well on my bacon and bourbon show on Saturday Morning Life. As another plug, just if you didn't get it, um, I think about AI, I talked about it, and I go, well, what does it mean? Like I had a couple of guests yeah. on, and um, AI was really good. I got to turn my uh, thing on. Hang on a second. Oh, at a moment. Um, but uh, I really, I, I got it. I got it to ask itself questions about what AI means and, and it was really interesting what it gave back. Yeah. So yeah, I've I've had to play with it. I think it's like I can see it being a trap for a lot of people. I actually believe that a lot of the young people will use um, chat GPT to to write 
messages to their friends and they, they can copy and text it on their phone. Mm. Um, I don't, you know, because I've had some response from some people who all, all of a sudden give really good graphically or gr gr grammatically correct sentences with capitals in texts that they've never done, they've never done <laughs> before. I'm going, okay, so these these kids who would have no real education, not not to say of education that we would have had, have been whipped if we didn't get our grammar correct, uh, all of a sudden overnight their grammar is perfect. I'm going, okay, someone's either writing that for them or there's something going on. So I actually think it's taking away from creativity in the individual. I think it's a I think it's a fantastic tool if you use it for a tool. But I see a lot of people using it as a I don't know, using it for the wrong reasons. I don't think they're it's going to open their minds up. I'm not afraid of it. I'm actually excited of AI. I think it's going to be a next phase of our evolution as humankind for sure. But I can see a lot of lazy people using it for the wrong reasons. Got to be careful with plagiarism and copyright claims and all sorts of, there's all sorts of stuff uh, there. Oh, so Dave, what happened with as much as I've you. had a fantastic chat with you, we've been going for 47 minutes. Wow. <laughs> and I have a go. dog who wants to go for his walk. <laughs> oh, that's a, I've got to tell you, Victoria, that's a selfish dog. I mean, like, really, come I on. Know. But I really, know. seriously, um, thank you so much. If there's anything that you, I'm going to put in the description below, um, that, that your book, particularly on Amazon, if it's still available, I'd like to Only put that up there. Only in Kindle form now. It's what, sorry? Only in Kindle form now. Oh, that's fine. I'll put the yeah. link down there. Um, anything that you'd else like to put in there or share, that would be fantastic in the description. Um, any hashtags, let me know, and I'll put them down there so that people can get to, to you in particular and your business. I'd like that to be put down in the description as well. So if you could um, text that through to me, that would be fantastic. Fabulous. So. Given that it's been going for this long, I can't believe it's gone so quickly. It's been a fantastic chat with it you. Has. We we will call it. We will finish it. So um, my thanks to you and appreciation and gratitude for you being on the lounge with me. Uh, I'm not going to show you the picture I've done of you. I'm just going to put it up and you can see it when it's live. Gutless. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I know you, Victoria. And actually, when you come and stay, I'm probably going to run away for a little bit. Um, yeah, good. Yeah, but um, really, really seriously, thank you so much for sharing everything with us. I really do appreciate it. And everybody, please get on to uh, – Victoria's got a Insta face, TikTok, Graham face, whatever. If you've got any I'll ways you can the, give me – I'll send you the links, David. Yep, that will be cool. I'll put them in the description below. Get on there and follow her and okay. follow her journey on her travels around in her um, uh, homestays, uh, uh, sits. And get on, get on to Kindle and get the book, which will be in the description below as well. And everybody, please thank Victoria as best you can from the distance you are by liking this channel and subscribing, notifications on. Go to Rumble and hit that um, thumbs up. Victoria, Rose, thank you so much for being with us and being with me on the lounge. I can't um, wait to put this up for everyone to have a look at it. Thank you. Thank you, David. All the best to you. Thanks, Victoria. Bye.